So today we're going to talk about which is better for your food storage, especially your long-term food storage. Popcorn or cornmeal? Now a lot of food storage websites or so-called experts say that popcorn is better, primarily because of shelf life. But is that true? Let's look at the advantages and disadvantages of both. But first, let's explain the different types of corn. Field or dent corn is harvested rather late and it's drier when it's harvested. And it actually has a dent in it when it reaches maturity. And this is what we think of as livestock feed. And it's also used to make corn syrup and it's the number one type of corn grown in America. I don't think I have to explain what sweet corn is. That's what we enjoy in the summer and look forward to. And of course, what we find canned in the stores. Popcorn is a separate variety. It's corn that's a little bit more mushier, starchier inside, but it's very hard shell. And when it calendars enough heat, the insides steam up and then explode. But now let's look more careful at the advantages of popcorn and the advantages of cornmeal and what are the disadvantages. It's said that popcorn can have an indefinite shelf life if stored right. Whereas cornmeal in its container on open about one year to 18 months at room temperature. According to stilltasty.com, stone ground cornmeal that has been kept constantly frozen at zero Fahrenheit will keep safe indefinitely. So this means for shelf life, popcorn wins. But depending on an SHTF situation, you might not have electricity to keep that freezer going. As far as flour goes, cornmeal definitely wins. It is already ground up. Let me show you what's involved in grinding popcorn to make flour. Now you can grind your popcorn here in a mortar and pestle arrangement, which takes some muscle or you can use a food grinder, or in my case to show you, I'm using a coffee grinder. So we're just going to Okay, don't want to put too much in because we can overheat it. Basically you want to do a pulsing action. almost there. Okay. So can you see? Let's pour it out here. So you have a pretty fine flour. There's some bigger bits that I could have actually maybe pulsed it a little longer, but you can always sift it. But this is how you're going to make corn flour using popcorn. Pretty easy. And for those of us that are worried about genetically modified crops, in that case, popcorn wins. As far as I know, there aren't any GMO modified crops of popcorn, unlike our corn. But there's some other benefits of popcorn. And one of them is, it makes a delicious snack, right? When my grandkids spend the night, they expect two things. They expect fresh eggs, and bacon and toast for breakfast and a popcorn snack filled with butter and salt while we watch a movie. So popcorn used as a snack can have a lot of morale boosting to it. So definitely points on that. And also after the popcorn is popped, you can crush it up and use it for coating on things like fish sticks and chicken tenders but cornmeal is vitamin enriched. So what does this really mean? Does it really matter? Let's look into that a little deeper. So I found an interesting article on Gastro Obscura, the website, and it's entitled, The Mysterious Case of the Killer Cornbread. And no, it's not a cozy mystery. So in 1908, the United States suffered its first outbreak of a disease 
that was eventually called Pelagora. It is a terrible disease, caused blistering rash, and you look at the hands in this picture, followed by diarrhea, then dementia, and death. It had first been identified actually two years earlier in Spain and then Italy, and it was most common in areas where people survived on a diet of corn. We figure in the U.S. that Pelagora killed about 100,000 people and sickened 3 million more in the early 20th century. Pelagora was primarily a disease of the South. And let's look into further why that was. Actually, the South is the only area of our country where people ate large quantities of cornmeal. According to USDA, for the first half of the 20th century, families in the North, rather rich or poor, ate just a few ounces of cornmeal per week. By contrast, the poorest farm families in the South consumed as much as 12 pounds of cornmeal a week, while the richest consumed still eight or nine pounds. Now, incomes in the South were far lower than those in the North. Uh, in our richest state at the time, New York, the average worker earned $929 a year. In our poorest state at the time, Alabama, that same worker would only earn $321 for the year. So in the South, to stretch the income, people bought corn. In 1909, 25 cents would buy you seven pounds of wheat flour, but 10 pounds of cornmeal. So in the South, they got it because it was cheap and many Southerners were very poor and consisted on a diet little more than cornmeal and molasses. Now we know that Gora is not because of killer cornbread. Instead, it is because of the way the cornmeal was prepared, it lacked niacin. And you can find niacin in fresh meat, milk, and eggs, and nuts. And it's found in corn and cornmeal too, but it can only be used in the body for prepared ways familiar to indigenous South and Central American people. Not the way the Southerners made cornbread. So, eventually, our government stepped in, enriched cornmeal with niacin and some other vitamins, and then there is no problem. This has niacin. This does not. Well, it does, but you won't get it in your body unless properly prepared. According to Wikipedia, nixtamalization, which is a process of preparing maize, which is corn, or other grains in which the corn is soaked and cooked in an alkyne solution, usually lime water. But sometimes the Native Americans use wood ash lye. They washed the corn and then hulled it and involved in cooking and steeping the dry corn kernels in an alkyne solution, then cooking them until tender. At this point, the corn is called nixtamal and can be ground into masa for tortillas, tamales, or hundreds of other dishes. And the whole corn can also be eaten as is, and then it's called hominy. Now you can store calcium hydroxide, or what is commonly called pickling lime, if you want to process your popcorn. It will keep about five years unopened and one year opened. So storing popcorn, if you're going to use it as the primary ingredient in your diet, you will have to have some way to process it so it produces niacin. But I think for most of us, this is not the prime ingredient in our food storage. And because of that, I think it's fine to store both the popcorn and the cornmeal. They both come in handy, just this will last a bit longer. Now, you can also buy from Honeyville, actually cornmeal that has been vacuum packed in a number 10 can and I think it will keep up to 15 years. I've placed the link down below for an MSU informative publication on using and storing cornmeal. It has recipes for cornbread, fried cornmeal mush, spoon bread, cornmeal griddle cakes, and tamale pie. We eat this, like I said, when the grandkids come over. Occasionally, I make Johnny cakes or something using cornbread. I might use it on the bottom when I'm baking bread, but I guess you can tell I'm a northern girl. I wasn't raised a lot with making fried cornmeal mush or anything like that. So for me, yeah, I'll include some of this in my food storage, but 
I will also include some popcorn. Now, this is the way I store my cornmeal uh, in my glass canning jars. I vacuum pack them and then I put the date right and what's in here and then I store them in the drawer of my freezer so it will keep a long time especially since I don't use much cornmeal. Anyway, I thought this was an interesting subject and I'd love to hear, do you store popcorn? Do you store cornmeal? Do you store both? If so, please comment below and tell me how often you use cornmeal in your daily diet.